YouTube. It has been a while since we've done a YouTube video, but we are back and today we've got the S14 here in Mandela Park. It's a little bit rainy, but it's for a special occasion. And that occasion is Driftmasters European Championship. So yes, as you can see, the S14 is back together. We've got my dad, he's for the first time ever been helping me out in five years. This is like IADC in 2016, do you remember? Yeah. And a little 86 Corolla. Man. It's like, uh, Back in time, maybe basically, six, seven years? no, we're actually in a proper car, you know, it's not like an 86 Corolla or something, yeah, with bubble wings and all of that. Yeah, with stupid wings and all of that. So, yeah, S14 is ready to go. We're in the first practice group, so we need to get ready for that. Uh, it's Friday, so who's that guy? <laughs> How you doing, man? So, yeah, uh, practice up first, we're in group A, so we're up in the next. 20 minutes or something like that we better get out there but uh car is ready to go um yeah just doing some final checks but uh yeah it's been a busy couple of weeks ahead happy now we're at the track we're ready to drive it's the first time we'll be driving it today our first time in many many months completely new everything um and we'll do a proper break or like run through breakdown we'll do a proper breakdown of the car uh, probably tomorrow morning or something like that and we'll upload that in separate videos so you guys get to see that as well Get some practice on. So that is fighter practice done. Um, I didn't really get to record any runs actually, in fact. Um, so sorry about that. But, but yeah, I think I think it was um, pretty good. Uh, we have a few issues with the car. So it's actually on jack stands right now. Um, so we uh, we have these um, rose joints. You can see they're pretty stiff. So the steering response wasn't the greatest. Um, so we just need to change, we're going to try and change these out tonight and see if we can um, improve the steering response or uh, steering feel because right now, um, yeah, like you can see, that is pretty loose, that's fine um, and even with the, uh, the tie rods disconnected, the steering is pretty light, I mean it's not spinning, it's not floating but uh, it seems to be pretty light, so yeah, not really sure what's causing that. Either way, that's kind of it for today. Uh, we'll be back again in the morning, try to record some stuff, uh, GoPro stuff. Other than that, I'll keep it quite short, straight back into runs in the morning. Saturday morning here in Mandela Park. So we are back again this morning. Um, uh, we're going to do some practice later. I know we mentioned last clip that I was going to uh, throw some GoPro footage from the practice this morning. But uh, we were just changing out the um, rose joints. So, um, should be a fairly simple fix. Uh, Darren at Group D dropped us down some rose joints when he came up last night. We're just popping them back in right now. Hopefully that fixes our steering binding issue. Um, what we actually had in the car was our spares. Uh, we had spare um, rose joints and um, uh, they were perfect, but for some reason they got stiff. So I think maybe we were over tightening them, I'm not really sure. Anyway, that should hopefully fix that. And then let's see what it's like in practice this morning. We'll have to probably obviously check the toes. Up. So, um, right, practice. one of the best sim drivers in the world but also trying to prove that he's one of the best drivers in the world full stop phenomenal first run i think he's done enough to nearly get into that top 32.
Now he's got nothing to lose. He's got to go big here. He certainly is going to go big here, Dave. We know it Alan Hines for a long while. We've watched his driving start progress. And look at this big flick here to that first corner as Alan Hines balances that car on a foot brake. Look how clean he is on that white line. Keeps the car absolutely dialed. As Hines gets into the outside zone, he's going for a big score here, Dave. This one is working up. Look at the smoke generated from the back of that S14 as he goes to the wall. Alan Hines bringing a statement. He says, if my fellow Irishman can do it, I can break the 92. Wow, what a run from Alan Hines. That was sensational. Almost inch perfect. I mean, I think he thinks he's in the sim world again. There was no fear. He just said, oh, you know, he's, he's, I'm in my bedroom. I'm in my bedroom. I'm in my bedroom. There's no people watching me. And he is, he's blitzed it. Wow, look Absolutely at this Absolutely blitzed it. Watch this. It was the line. Watch the line from here to outside zone three. Look at he's on the white line, not over it, not shy of it. Absolutely perfectly on it, and he fulfills this outside zone perfectly. I'm not sure what more you can do. There's a little wheel drop here, but it's not bad. It's just a moment. But this wall run, watch this. Runs the whole wall, kicks it on the wall to the clutch, and pushes it all the way up. I'm going to say this is a bigger score than James Dean's first qualifying. Big statement, Dean. Big statement. That's statements. what I'm saying, Dave. So we're waiting for the score for Alan Hines. We're waiting it's for the score, It's going to be a big Dave. Hines in. The is score... it a bigger score than James Dean's? That's what we're saying, Dave. What is it, Dave? James Dean scored a 93. Alan Hines scores a 95 on the board wow. for Alan Hines. Woo. 95 points on the board. And he hadn't even put the car together on Wednesday. This is this is a week for him. I just want to say... Look at this big flick in. spot 95 points now I know that this is a completely refreshed car you've only had six laps out in it and now you're sitting right at the top you've got to be happy with that uh, you've no idea this is a uh, you know I've come to drift masters twice before the first time in this car when it was a bit older a couple of years ago and we had a decent performance then and uh, we came back in 2019 again we borrowed a friend's car and we did okay but this time you know it feels something different it, it feels completely different this car is completely new to me and uh, yeah, it feels really good to be back up. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. I got, him, I got out of the car and I was nearly crying. It's, it's kind of what I want to do. I want to be at this level. Unfortunately, we won't be able to make it happen this year. But we're here, we're in my uh, home country, and I'm hoping to fly the Irish flag proud. You know, as the car comes hurtling over that blind crest of a hill into the right, you've got to tell me what's going through your head. Uh, well, you just launch it in and hope for the best. Uh, generally, you know, you send it in, you try and recalculate all those uh, times you did it before and hope that this time it's the better than the last time and that time I think was pretty much perfect I loved it Alan you smashed it congratulations let's see if you can hold on to that top spot so it's been a few weeks since Drift Masters and um, wow what an awesome event it was for us well I mean the Saturday was amazing qualified for with a 95 and then obviously Sunday just kind of went a bit sour um, to kind of give some context we went out for our first practice run on Sunday we had Peter Vincek chasing us and uh I don't know if you can see in the clip or right here in this video, but it was actually a mark on the door from where he hit us across the line when the engine failed. And uh, the engine was still running, it was still drivable, but uh, it was running quite badly and um, it was still in the tree. Unfortunately, it melted the piston. Uh, I have a I'll show up a photo on the, of the piston right here on the screen or I'll take a picture or a video or whatever. But uh, the team were basically working on the car to try and see if it was something else at the time, uh, but we ended up determining that it was a melted piston in the end. Uh, the block, interestingly, um, you know, the rest of the cylinder bores look pretty sweet, and then you look at number three, and uh, as I block the light here, so obviously you guys can kind of see or make it out, uh, but uh, yeah, that looks fairly rough indeed, 
Um, and it, it, that, they reckon that might be a bit of aluminium built up from the um, bit of aluminium from the uh, uh, the piston that milled it. So, um, but other than that, the the block is reusable at least. So we will use this again. This is a GE. This is a GE block, so it doesn't have the oil squirters for the uh, turbos. And uh, we run the uh, non VVTI rods and the GE non VVTI rods, which are basically the same as the turbo 2J rods, but it has a weaker piston. And I think the weaker the combination of the weaker piston, probably the lack of fuel or whatever is going into that cylinder chamber, um, that caused that cylinder to fail. And was the reason why it failed. Now, since then we've tested the injectors, we're hoping to have them back during the week. Um, and the person that, or the, uh, the, the, the company that's testing them reckon that maybe it was heat related to the injectors, which is kind of interesting. We do run a side feed injector, so maybe that's why uh, they're more prone to heat. I don't know, I've never experienced that issue before. So, I mean, look, the side feed injectors are probably pretty old as it is. So, changing the setup completely over here, we've got our HyperTune intake manifold that we've had for some time. Um, again, this plus with the other engine that's now replacing this uh, block right here um, was all meant for the new car that we've been building um, which has been slowed on for now because we've been prioritizing this thing um, so it now means we're spending more money fast tracking that engine but it does mean that we're testing that block we're getting it done bit of main caps BC rods uh, it's got oversized pistons fully forged bottom end you know on the head it's got the head off this setup so it's got a full BC head BC cams um, it's got valve guides, everything you basically need, um, but it's not been ported, it doesn't have new valves or anything like that, it's stock valves and stuff like that. So 276 BC cams, rip over the head, uh, awesome setup. So it's basically all of the BC catalog top to bottom uh, with OEM stuff. And then after that, it's pretty much pretty basic setup other than the built main caps, which is pretty baller. But uh, yeah, it should be good for 650 horsepower, we're hoping, especially with the HTX 64 or 4064 turbo. Um, I don't really think we're utilizing that turbo a lot. Yeah, I don't know where the turbo has gone, but I don't think we're really utilizing the, all of that turbo. So I think that'll be interesting to see how that comes out. Other than that, I think that's going to where we're going to end it for here. Unfortunately, we didn't record that much. I was kind of hoping that the Sunday uh, we'd have a lot more involved, have more people around and we could record more bits and pieces, but that didn't really end up happening because we didn't really drive that much. But one other cool thing is Drift Aid is on this Sunday on the 29th of May. It's in aid of neonatal unit in the... Um, in Cork so pretty awesome charity uh, drift aid um, yeah it's on this Sunday make sure if you're based in Ireland and you want to see some drifting you want to support an awesome charity come on down in Watergrass till 29th of May uh, we were supposed to drive but unfortunately there's, there's no engine inside there so I don't think we'll be able to do much but we will be there in person we might do some commentary we might do some judging I don't know what we'll do but we'll be there in person so other than that we'll see you guys there Thank you so much for watching this video. Talk to you guys later. Peace. And see, is anything rising on it? They're out. Out of all